My name is Krishna Ekam, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, we will be discussing about hypothesis testing. Now, this is the question that are asked by many of you subscribers. And again, trust me guys, there are a whole lot of confusion regarding this. Because this concept is not much clear with respect to most of the learners. So, I am taking this particular opportunity to explain you. And this will just not be one video. I am going to explain you about hypothesis testing. Then, in the next video, we will be discussing about t-values, t-test, n-over test, z-test. Uh, which is also called as Z-score and apart from that I will also be discussing about Chi-square test. So these are the, all the types of uh, hypothesis testing which you can see over here T-test, ANOVA test, Z-test, Chi-square test and many more. And we will also be discussing about the p-values in the uh, later classes. Here I will just be giving you the introduction about hypothesis testing, some basic knowledge about p-values and we will also be discussing about type 1 and type 2 error. So in the upcoming videos, in around 3 to 4 videos, we will complete this whole thing about hypothesis testing so that you will not be having any questions furthermore. So let us go ahead. What exactly is hypothesis testing? See guys, statistics is all about data. You know, there is a huge amount of data and that data will only be useful if you are going to analyze it, if you are going to find out some conclusions from it. Right? So it is very very much important. And to find out such important uh, interpretation and conclusion, we basically use hypothesis testing. Now, generally, generally, what is exactly hypothesis testing? We'll discuss about that. What is hypothesis testing? What are the different types of hypothesis testing? What are the steps in hypothesis testing? Everything we'll try to discuss. So in hypothesis testing, we actually evaluate two mutual exclusive statement. And this is just an example. We can evaluate three to four mutual statement also. For that, we usually use ANOVA test. Okay, but just understand in the basic terminology, we try to evaluate two mutual exclusive statements on a population using a sample of data. Okay, just try to understand this. We evaluate two mutual exclusive statements. Okay, so there are two things. Either this one can be true or this one can be true. Okay, it may be any statement. On a population data using sample data. Okay, and then we finally conclude that this population belongs, it is true for a particular statement or the other statement. Just think in this particular way. So I may say that, I may take a very good example. In the court of law, I may say that the defendant is guilty, the defendant is innocent. So these are two statements, right? And one of the statements can be true. How it will be true? I'll just discuss about the steps. And for testing that, again guys, for testing that we need evidence, right? We need evidence. So let us go ahead and take a particular example. What are the steps? of hypothesis testing. So over here, the first step says that we have to make an initial assumption. Now if I take an example of, you know, whether the defendant is guilty or he is innocent. So let me consider that I am taking the initial assumption as H0 and H0 basically says to me, it is basically called as null hypothesis. Okay. And this H0, I can make an assumption saying that the defendant is innocent. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll be assigning that particular first statement to this. So I'm making an initial assumption. Then I will start collecting the data. Now, what is this particular data? This particular data will nothing be, but it will be just evidences. You know. Now, for the criminal cases, I may take the fingerprints, I may take the DNA prints, and lot of things, right, to find out whether the defendant is guilty or whether he is innocent, right. So I'll start collecting the data, which is also called as evidences. Okay, evidences. Now I will gather these evidences and then I will try to analyze whether to, whether to reject this null hypothesis or whether should I accept the null hypothesis. Now in this null hypothesis is what? Whether the de defendant is innocent or not. Okay, and suppose if I just take an example of court of law, if the evidence is against him, I will actually reject this and I will say that the defendant is guilty. Right, this is just an example. But in case of data, when we have huge amount of data, we will try to analyze that particular data. We try to experiment those particular data, considering the sample data, not the population, but sample data. And then we can actually come to a conclusion on that population whole data itself. Okay, so that is what. These are very initial steps, guys. This is called as null hypothesis. Okay, so the defendant is innocent. Okay, this becomes a null hypothesis. There is also one more hypothesis which is called as alternate hypothesis. So we indicate it as H1. The H1 will be the opposite of H0. So if the de defendant is innocent over here, over here the defendant will be guilty. Okay. So if we are able to prove this, then this becomes true. If we are not able to prove this due to the lack of evidences, we will actually reject this 
and accept this alternate hypothesis. Pretty much simple. You know, just consider it in this particular way. Just understand these basic concepts, guys. How to do it, how to do it mathematically, how to do it with the help of code. I will be explaining it in the upcoming course. But this is very important to understand what is null hypothesis, what is the alternate hypothesis. Okay? This is just an experiment. The experiment has two outcomes. Either one can be true, the other can be true. And for that, you have evidences. Whichever evidences supports, uh, which uh, either can support null hypothesis or an alternate hypothesis. So either of them, one will be actually true. And again, we require a lot of evidences for that. A lot of tests will be there for that. Okay. Now, you have understood this. Okay. Now, if I just consider, if I just consider this particular stuff, and if I just consider that, suppose if a null hypothesis is actually true. Okay. I am saying that here the defendant is uh, innocent. I am saying. But I don't have much evidence. I know. Somewhere or the other way, this null hypothesis is true, but I don't have enough evidence. Then what will happen? This will get rejected, right? This null hypothesis will get rejected because I don't have much evidence. So instead, it will get selected as alternate hypothesis. There, the defendant will be pledged guilty. But I know, or we know, suppose this defendant is uh, innocent, right? And we, since we do not have much evidence, we are treating him as guilty. Okay, and if I go to this confusion matrix, I hope you remember, if you know about classification, uh, any algorithms with respect to classification, you have heard of confusion matrix. Now in the confusion matrix, in the top side, you have truth. In the left side, you basically say that, do we have to reject this assumption, that is your null hypothesis, or we should reject or we should not reject. Okay, now in this particular case, I am saying that, H0, my defendant is innocent, but I did not have you know, uh, I did not have evidence. Because of that, this got rejected and this got selected. Now, this scenario will come over here, which is basically called as my type 1 error. Okay? Due to the lack of evidence, I had to reject the null hypothesis and because of that, this is basically an error. And because of that, I have selected the alternate hypothesis. You can see over here, this is my H0. Right? So, this situation may lead to a lot of effect. You know, since we know that this person was innocent, but due to lack of evidence, we had to go over here. And this is what the type 1 error is actually belonging to. We know that this is true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative, right? I hope you all know this. This is confusion matrix. But what is the exact thing? Here we have the truth value. Here we have the null hypothesis. Here we have the alternate hypothesis. Here we have, should we reject this null hypothesis or not? Or should we, uh, I mean, should we reject or should we not reject the null hypothesis? Okay, so pretty much simple, pretty much easy to understand. What about type 2 error? Let me take an example. Suppose I say that my null hypothesis says H0, the market is going to crash. The market is going to crash. Okay? And my alternate hypothesis is the opposite of this. Okay? The market is not going to crash. Okay? Now what will happen? Suppose I do not have enough evidence now. I do not have enough evidence. Because of this, I was not able to prove uh, this market is going to crash or not. Now, in my alternate hypothesis, suppose I say that the market is not going to crash. Market is not going to crash. Okay? And I, I collected various evidence. I collected various evidence. And from that, I found out that my H1 became true. But, suppose due to some of lack of evidence, this is becoming true. The market is going to crash over there. So in this particular scenario, I will be getting a type 2 error. Okay? And you can see that with respect to this type 2 error, I do not re reject that. Right? So this is basically a type 2 error. And because of this, we forgot to, or we, we, we did not manage to capture whether the market is going to crash or not. And this is catastrophic, guys. Because if we can understand if the market is going to crash, it can save a whole lot of money. It can save many people's lives. Right? So this type 1 and type 2 error can play a major role in hypothesis testing. So whenever you solve the classification problems, whenever you solve with the help of any machine learning algorithms, this always make sure that you see this type 1 and type 2 error. Pretty much simple guys. Again, I'm going to repeat what is exactly type 2 error. Okay. Now here you can see that I do not reject uh, this H1 statement, which is the truth. And considering this market is not going to crash, I'm going to approve this considering that I do not have much evidence to support this. Okay, when I did not have much evidence to support this, all I have to do is that I have to go and select this. But, 
it may happen in such a way that due to lack of evidence in the future, this was the original statement over there. And because of that, I predicted this, I came to a conclusion with respect to this, right? But when I tried to compare it with the truth value, this became my type 2 error. So this, this is very, very important, this type 1 and type 2 error to understand, okay? And you should understand with respect to the confusion matrix and considering the real world problem statement, right? So this is pretty much important, guys. This is what is all about hypothesis testing, okay? And it depends whether type 1 error can be more harmful or type 2 error can be more harmful based on the problem statement that you are solving, okay? And now, in my next video, I'll be showing you how you can go ahead with hypothesis testing, how to perform hypothesis testing. I'll be solving a simple math problem statement like how we did in schools, in colleges, so that you will be able to understand how to solve hypothesis testing with the help of p-values, what is p-values, what is t-test, and what is z-test. Now, whenever I'm saying that, I'm, I'm not able to prove this null hypothesis, we basically consider a p-value less than 0 0.05. If the value is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis, go with alternate hypothesis. Now, you may be considering what is this 0 0.05? This is called as significance value. I'll be telling you the importance of this p-value because I have to draw a normal distribution and in that particular curve, I have to show where this p value indicates, what, what this p is less than or equal to 0 0.05 indicate. So I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. And please make sure guys, you start watching this playlist every day. I will be coming up with other, other videos so that you will not be having any questions related to it. And this is pretty much important. Right? So I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one dog.